Pseudo Dionysus the Areopagite, Greek, Dionysios Ho Areopagites, also known as Pseudo Denis, was a Christian theologian and philosopher of the late 5th to early 6th century, who wrote a set of works known as the Corpus Areopagiticum or Corpus Dionysiacum. The author pseudonymously identifies himself in the Corpus as Dionysios, portraying himself as the figure of Dionysus the Areopagite, the Athenian convert of Paul the Apostle mentioned in Acts 17, verse 34. This false attribution to the earliest decades of Christianity resulted in the work being given great authority in subsequent theological writing in both East and West. The Dionysian writings and their mystical teaching were universally accepted throughout the East, amongst both Chalcedonians and non-Chalcedonians, and also had a strong impact in later medieval Western mysticism, most notably Meister Eckhart. Its influence decreased in the West with the 15th century demonstration of its later dating, but in recent decades, interest has increased again in the Corpus Areopagiticum. Topic. Corpus Topic. Works The Corpus is today composed of Divine Names Perithian Onomaton Celestial Hierarchy Perites Orinu hierarchy is ecclesiastical hierarchy. Perites ecclesiastics hierarchy is mystical theology. Perimystikis theology, a brief but powerful work that deals with negative or apophatic theology and in which theology becomes explicitly mystical for the first time in history. Ten epistles, seven other works are mentioned repeatedly by Pseudo Dionysus in his surviving works, and are presumed either to be lost or to be fictional works mentioned by the Areopagite as a literary device to give the impression to his 6th century readers of engaging with the surviving fragments of a much larger 1st century corpus of writings. These seven other works are Theological Outlines, Theologicae Hypotiposes Symbolic Theology. Symbolic Theologia on Angelic Properties and Orders Peri Angelicon Idiotaton Chi Tacon on the Just and Divine Judgment Peri Decaeu Chi Theu Dicasteriu on the Soul Peri Psyches on Intelligible and Sensible Beings On the Divine Hymns Topic. Dating In attempts to identify a date after which the corpus must have been composed, a number of features have been identified in Dionysus' writing, though the latter two are subject to scholarly debate. Firstly, and fairly certainly, it is clear that Dionysus adopted many of his ideas—including at times passages almost word for word—from Proclus, who died in 485, thus providing at the least a late 5th century early limit to the dating of Dionysus. In the ecclesiastical hierarchy Dionysus twice seems to allude to the recitation of the creed in the course of the liturgy A3.2 and 3, 3.7. It is often asserted that Peter the Fuller first mandated the inclusion of the Nicene Creed in the liturgy in 476, thus providing an earliest date for the composition of the corpus. However, Bernard Capel argues that it is far more likely that Timothy, Patriarch of Constantinople, was responsible for this liturgical innovation, around 515, thus suggesting a later date for the corpus. It is often suggested that because Dionysus seems to eschew divisive Christological language, he was probably writing after the Henoticon of Zeno was in effect, sometime after 482. However, it is also possible that Dionysus eschewed traditional Christological formulae in order to preserve an overall apostolic ambience for his works, rather than because of the influence of the Henoticon. Also, given that the Henoticon was rescinded in 518, if Dionysus was writing after this date, he may have been untroubled by this policy. In terms of the latest date for the composition of the corpus, the earliest datable reference to Dionysus' writing comes in 528, the year in which the treatise of Severus of Antioch entitled Adversus Apologium Juliani was translated into Syriac. Though it is possible the treatise may originally have been composed up to nine years earlier, another widely cited latest date for Dionysus' writing comes in 532, when, in a report on a colloquy held between two groups Orthodox and Monophysite debating the decrees of the Council of Chalcedon, Severus of Antioch and his Monophysite supporters cited Dionysus' fourth letter in defense of their view. It is possible that Pseudo-Dionysus was himself a member of this group, though debate continues over whether his writings do in fact reveal a Monophysite understanding of Christ. 
It seems likely that the writer was located in Syria, as revealed, for example, by the accounts of the sacramental rites he gives in the ecclesiastical hierarchy, which seem only to bear resemblance to Syriac rites. Topic. Authorship The author pseudonymously identifies himself in the corpus as Dionysios, portraying himself as the figure of Dionysus the Areopagite, the Athenian convert of Paul the Apostle mentioned in Acts 17, verse 34. Various legends existed surrounding the figure of Dionysus, who became emblematic of the spread of the Gospel to the Greek world. A tradition quickly arose that he became the first bishop of Cyprus or of Milan, or that he was the author of the Epistle to the Hebrews. According to Eusebius, he was also said to be the first bishop of Athens. It is therefore not surprising that that author of these works would have chosen to adopt the name of this otherwise briefly mentioned figure. The authorship of the Dionysian corpus was initially disputed. Severus and his party affirmed its apostolic dating, largely because it seemed to agree with their Christology. However, this dating was disputed by Hypatius of Ephesus, who met the Monophysite party during the 532 meeting with Emperor Justinian I. Hypatius denied its authenticity on the ground that none of the fathers or councils ever cited or referred to it. Hypatius condemned it along with the Apollinarian texts, distributed during the Nestorian controversy under the names of Pope Julius and Athanasius, which the Monophysites entered as evidence supporting their position. The first defense of its authenticity is undertaken by John of Scythopolis, whose commentary, the Sholia, ca. 540, on the Dionysian corpus constitutes the first defense of its apostolic dating, wherein he specifically argues that the work is neither Apollinarian nor a forgery, probably in response both to Monophysites and Hypatius, although even he, given his unattributed citations of Plotinus in interpreting Dionysus, might have known better. Dionysus' authenticity is criticized later in the century, and defended by Theodore of Rethu, and by the 7th century, it is taken as demonstrated, affirmed by both Maximus the Confessor and the Lateran Council of 649. From that point until the Renaissance, the authorship was less questioned, though Thomas Aquinas, Peter Abillard, and Nicholas of Cusa expressed suspicions about its authenticity. Their concerns, however, were generally ignored. The Florentine humanist Lorenzo Valla, d. 1457, in his 1457 commentaries on the New Testament, did much to establish that the author of the Corpus Areopagiticum could not have been St. Paul's convert, though he was unable to identify the actual historical author. William Grosson pursued Valla's lines of textual criticism, and Valla's critical viewpoint of the authorship of the highly influential corpus was accepted and publicized by Erasmus from 1504 onward, for which he was criticized by Catholic theologians. In the Leipzig disputation with Martin Luther, in 1519, Johann Eck used the corpus, specifically the angelic hierarchy, as argument for the apostolic origin of papal supremacy, pressing the Platonist analogy, as above, so below. During the 19th century modernist Catholics too came generally to accept that the author must have lived after the time of Proclus. The author became known as Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite only after the philological work of J. Stiglmer and H. Koch, whose papers, published independently in 1895, demonstrated the thoroughgoing dependence of the corpus upon Proclus. Both showed that Dionysus had used, in his treatise on evil in Chapter 4 of the Divine Names, the De Malorum Subsistentia of Proclus. Dionysus' identity is still disputed. Corrigan and Harrington find Pseudo-Dionysus to be most probably a pupil of Proclus, perhaps of Syrian origin, who knew enough of Platonism and the Christian tradition to transform them both. Since Proclus died in 485, and since the first clear citation of Dionysus' works is by Severus of Antioch between 518 and 528, then we can place Dionysus' authorship between 485 and 518 to 28. Ronald Hathaway provides a table listing most of the major identifications of Dionysus, e.g., Ammonius Saccas, Pope Dionysus of Alexandria, Peter the Fuller, Dionysus the Scholastic, Severus of Antioch, Sergius of Rishena, unnamed Christian followers of everyone from Origen to Basil of Caesarea, Eutyches to Proclus. In the past half century, Alexander Golitsyn, Georgian academician Shalva Nutzabedes, and Belgian professor Ernest Honigman have all proposed identified pseudo Dionysus the Areopagite with. Peter the Iberian. A more recent identification is with Damasius, the last scholarch of the Neoplatonic Academy of Athens. There is therefore no current scholarly consensus on the question of pseudo-Dionysus identification. 
The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy claims, It must also be recognized that forgery is a modern notion. Like Plotinus and the Cappadocian fathers before him, Dionysus does not claim to be an innovator, but rather a communicator of a tradition. Others scholars such as Bart D. Ehrman disagree, see for example Forged. However, while the pseudo-Dionysus can be seen as a communicator of tradition, he can also be seen as a polemicist, who tried to alter Neoplatonic tradition in a novel way for the Christian world that would make notions of complicated divine hierarchies more of an emphasis than notions of direct relationship with the figure of Christ as mediator. Topic. Thought Dionysus attributed his inspiration to pseudo hierotheus professing that he was writing to popularize the teachings of his master. pseudo hierotheus was the author of The Book of Hierotheus on the Hidden Mysteries of the House of God. pseudo hierotheus is believed to be the 5th century Syrian monk Stephen Bar Sudhile. The works of Dionysus are mystical, and show strong Neoplatonic influence. For example, he uses Plotinus' well-known analogy of a sculptor cutting away that which does not enhance the desired image, and shows familiarity with Proclus. He also shows influence from Clement of Alexandria, the Cappadocian Fathers, Origen, and others. <laughs> <laughs> Mystical theology According to Pseudo-Dionysus, God is better characterized and approached by negations than by affirmations. All names and theological representations must be negated. According to Pseudo-Dionysus, when all names are negated, divine silence, darkness, and unknowing will follow. Influence Eastern Orthodox Christianity His thought was initially used by Monophysites to back up parts of their arguments but his writings were eventually adopted by other church theologians, primarily due to the work of John of Scythopolis and Maximus the Confessor in producing an orthodox interpretation. Writing a single generation at most after Dionysus, perhaps between 537 and 543, John of Scythopolis composed an extensive set around 600 of sholia that is, marginal annotations to the works of Dionysus. These were in turn prefaced by a long prologue in which John set out his reasons for commenting on the corpus. All Greek manuscripts of the Corpus Areopagiticum surviving today stem from an early 6th century manuscript containing John's Sholia and prologue. So John of Scythopolis had an enormous influence on how Dionysus was read in the Greek-speaking world. Theologians such as John of Damascus and Germanus I of Constantinople also made ample use of Dionysus' writing. The Dionysian writings and their mystical teaching were universally accepted throughout the East, amongst both Chalcedonians and non-Chalcedonians. Gregory Palamas, for example, in referring to these writings, calls the author, "...an unerring beholder of divine things." The corpus is also present in Syriac and Armenian versions, the former of which, by Sergius of Rishena in the early 6th century, serves as a terminus anti-quem for the dating of the original Greek. There is a distinct difference between Neoplatonism and that of Eastern Christianity. In the former, all life returns to the source to be stripped of individual identity, a process called henosis, while in Orthodox Christianity the likeness of God in man is restored by grace by being united to God the Trinity through participation in his divine energies, a process called theosis. Topic. Latin Christianity The first notice of Dionysus in the West comes from Pope Gregory I, who probably brought a codex of the Corpus Areopagitum back with him on his return from his mission as papal legate to the emperor in Constantinople in around 585. Gregory refers occasionally in his writings to Dionysus, although Gregory's Greek was probably not good enough to fully engage with Dionysus's work. In the 7th and 8th centuries, Dionysus was not widely known in the West, aside from a few scattered references. The real influence of Dionysus in the West began with the gift in 827 of a Greek copy of his works by the Byzantine Emperor Michael II to the Carolingian Emperor Louis the Pious. King Louis in turn gave the manuscript to the Monastery of Saint Denis near Paris where, in about 838, Dionysus' works were translated into Latin for the first time by Hilduin, abbot of the monastery. 
It may well have been Hilduin himself who promoted his work and his abbey by developing the legend which would be widely accepted during subsequent centuries, that Dennis was the same person as Dionysus the Areopagite of Acts 17.34, and that he had travelled to Rome and then was commissioned by the Pope to preach in Gaul, where he was martyred. Hildwin's translation, however, is almost unintelligible. About twenty years later, a subsequent Carolingian emperor, Charles the Bald, requested the Irishman John Scotus Ereugena to make a fresh translation. He finished this in 862. However, this translation itself did not widely circulate in subsequent centuries. Moreover, although Ereugena's own works, such as the homily on the prologue of St. John, show the influence of Dionysian ideas, these works were not widely copied or read in subsequent centuries. The Benedictine monasticism that formed the standard monasticism of the 8th to 11th centuries, therefore, in general paid little attention to Dionysus. In the 12th century, greater use gradually began to be made of Dionysus among various traditions of thought. Among Benedictines, especially at the Abbey of Saint Denis, greater interest began to be shown in Dionysus. For example, one of the monks of Saint Denis, John Sarazin, wrote a commentary on the celestial hierarchy in 1140, and then in 1165 made a translation of the work. Also, Sugar, abbot of Saint Denis from 1122 to 1151, drew on Dionysian themes to explain how the architecture of his new Gothic Abbey church helped raise the soul to God. Among the canons regular, Hugh of St. Victor edited two commentaries on the celestial hierarchy between 1125 and 1137, later revising and combining them as one. Richard of St. Victor was familiar with Dionysus through Hugh. Through Hugh, others became exposed to Dionysian thought, including Thomas Gallus and Gilbert de la Porre. In the Cistercian tradition, it seems that early writers such as Bernard of Clairvaux, William of Saint Thierry, and Elred of Rivalx were not influenced by Dionysian thought. Among second generation Cistercians, however, Isaac of Stella clearly shows the influence of Dionysian ideas. It is in the schools, though, that the 12th century growth in influence of Dionysus was truly significant. There are few references to Dionysus in scholastic theology during the 10th and 11th centuries. At the beginning of the 12th century, though, the masters of the cathedral school at Laon, especially Anselm of Laon, introduced extracts from John Scotus Ereugena's commentary on St. John into the sentences and the Glossa Ordinaria. In this manner, Dionysian concepts found their way into the writing of Peter Lombard and others. Bonaventure uses images and even direct quotations from Dionysus' mystical theology in the last chapter of his famous work Itinerarium Mentis in Diem the soul's journey into God. During the 13th century, the Franciscan Robert Grosteste made an important contribution by bringing out between 1240 and 1243 a translation, with commentary, of the Dionysian corpus. Soon after, the Dominican Albertus Magnus did likewise. The 13th century Parisian corpus provided an important reference point by combining the old translation of John Scotus Ereugena with the new translation of John Sarazin, along with glosses and scholia by Maximus the Confessor, John of Scythopolis, and others, as well as the extracts by Thomas Gallus, and several commentaries such as John Scotus Ereugena, John Sarazin, and Hugh of St. Victor on the celestial hierarchy. It quickly became common to make reference to Dionysus. Thomas Aquinas wrote an explanation for several works, and cites him over 1700 times. Bonaventure called him the Prince of Mystics. It was subsequently in the area of mysticism that Dionysus, especially his portrayal of the Via Negativa, was particularly influential. In the 14th and 15th centuries his fundamental themes were hugely influential on thinkers such as Marguerite Perret, Meister Eckhart, Johannes Thaler, John of Rusbroek, the author of The Cloud of Unknowing who made an expanded Middle English translation of Dionysus' mystical theology, Jean Gerson, Nicholas of Cusa, Dennis the Carthusian, Julian of Norwich and Harfius Herp. His influence can also be traced in the Spanish Carmelite thought of the 16th century among Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. Topic. Modern appraisal 
In recent decades, interest has increased again in the Corpus Areopagiticum, for three main reasons, because of a recovery of the huge impact of Dionysian thought in later Christian thought, because of an increasing repudiation of older criticisms that Dionysus's thought represented a fundamentally Neoplatonic approach to theology, and finally because of interest in parallels between aspects of modern linguistic theory and Dionysus's reflections on language and negative theology. Andrew Louth offers the following modern appraisal of the Areopagite. Dionysus, Dennis' vision is remarkable because, on the one hand, his understanding of hierarchy makes possible a rich symbolic system in terms of which we can understand God and the cosmos and our place within it, and, on the other, he finds room within this strictly hierarchical society for an escape from it, beyond it, by transcending symbols and realizing directly one's relationship with God as his creature, the creature of his love. There is space within the Dionysian universe for a multitude of ways of responding to God's love. That spaciousness is worth exploring, and therein, perhaps, lies the enduring value of the vision of Dionysus, Dennis the Areopagite. See also Christian meditation Dionysus the Areopagite Johannes Scotus Areugina Maximus the Confessor Philosophy of Happiness John Sarrazin Saint Dionysus Institute in Paris Theoria Rudolf Steiner Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Topic. Further reading Topic. Greek editions Migni, Patrologia Cursus Completus, Series Graeca III, Paris, 1857 Greek text. Beate Regina Suchla ed., Corpus Dionysiacum, 2 vols Berlin, Walter de Gruyter, 1990-1 The Modern Critical Edition La Hierarchie Celeste, ed. Roques R., Heil G. and Gandalak M., Sources Chrétiennes 58 Paris, Les Editions de Cerf, 1958, Critical Edition of the Celestial Hierarchy with French Translation Pseudo-Dionysus Areopagita, De Coelesti Hierarchia, London, 2012. Lamovia.net, ISBN 978-1-78336-010-9 Pseudo Dionysus, The Complete Works, Trans. Colm Lubied, New York, Paulist Press, 1987, The Only Complete Modern English Translation and the Only Modern English Translation of the Celestial Hierarchy, based almost entirely on the text in Migni. Dionysus the Pseudo Areopagite, The Ecclesiastical Hierarchy, Trans. Thomas L. Campbell, Lanham, M.D., University Press of America, 1981. Hathaway, Ronald F., Hierarchy and the Definition of Order in the Letters of Pseudo-Dionysus. A Study in the Form and Meaning of the Pseudo-Dionysian Writings, The Hague, Nyhoff, 1969, includes a translation of the letters on pp 130-160 Jones, John D., The Divine Names and Mystical Theology, Milwaukee, 1980 Rolt, C. E., The Divine Names and the Mystical Theology, London, SPCK, 1920 reprinted as Clarence Edwin Rolt, Dionysus the Areopagite on the Divine Names and the Mystical Theology, 2004, Ibis Press, ISBN 0-89254-095-8 Secondary sources Coakley, Sarah and Charles M. Stang, eds. Rethinking Dionysus the Areopagite, Oxford, Wiley Blackwell, 2008 Also published as Modern Theology 24-4, 2008 Friend, W. H. C. The Rise of the Monophysite Movement New York, Cambridge University Press, 1972. Golitsyn, Alexander. Et in Troibo ad alter dei, the mystagogy of Dionysus Areopagita, with special reference to its predecessors in the Eastern Christian tradition, Thessalonica, Patriarchicon Idruma Paterikon Meliton, 1994 Griffith, R., Neoplatonism and Christianity, Pseudo-Dionysus and Damasius, in E. A. Livingstone, ed., Studia Patristica 29. 
Papers presented at the 12th International Conference on Patristic Studies held in Oxford 1995, Leuven, Peters, 1997, 238-243. Hathaway, Ronald F. Hierarchy and the Definition of Order in the Letters of Pseudo-Dionysus, a Study in the Form and Meaning of the Pseudo-Dionysian Writings, The Hague, Nyhoff, 1969. Ivanovich, Philip, Symbol and Icon, Dionysus the Areopagite and the Iconoclastic Crisis Eugene, Pickwick, 2010. ISBN 978-1-60899-335-2 Leclerc, Jean, Influence and Noninfluence of Dionysus in the Western Middle Ages, in Pseudo-Dionysus, The Complete Works, Trans. Colm Lubied, New York, Paulist Press, 1987, pp 25-33 Louth, Andrew, Dionysus the Areopagite, London, Geoffrey Chapman, 1989 reissued by Continuum Press London and New York, 2001 under the title Dennis the Areopagite. Pearl, Eric D. Theophany, The Neoplatonic Philosophy of Dionysus the Areopagite, Albany, SUNY Press, 2007. ISBN 978-0-7914-7111-1. Roram, Paul. Pseudo-Dionysus, A Commentary on the Texts and an Introduction to Their Influence New York, Oxford University Press, 1993. Roram, Paul and John C. Lamoureux, John of Scythopolis and the Dionysian Corpus, Annotating the Areopagite, Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1998 Scouterus, Constantine, Platonic Elements in Pseudo-Dionysus Anti-Manichaean Ontology, Epistemonic Epiterus Tes Theologique Scholes II Panepistemio Athenon Tomos Caith Panepistemian Athenon Athenai 1994, pp. 193-201 Scouterus, Constantine, Malum Privatio Est, St. Gregory of Nyssa and P. Pseudo-Dionysus on the Existence of Evil Some Further Comments, paper presented at the 9th International Conference on Patristic Studies held in Oxford 1983, Studia Patristica, 18 pp. 539–550. Stock, Wiebke Marie, Thurgich's Denken. Zur Kirchlichen Hierarchie de Dionysus Areopagita Berlin, De Gruyter, 2008 Transformation in der Antique, 4. Topic external links Works written by or about Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite at Wikisource Corrigan, Kevin, Harrington, Michael. Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Dionysus the Pseudo-Areopagite in the Catholic Encyclopedia Commentary by Clarence Rolt 1920 on Pseudo-Dionysus's works available in PDF, HTML, and plain text formats accessed September 1, 2006 works about Dionysus the Pseudo-Areopagite Christian Classics Ethereal Library The Identity of Dionysus Areopagite. A Philosophical Approach. Logos 1-2007. Pope Benedict XVI on Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite May 14, 2008, Zenit.org In defense of the Dionysian authorship three essays from the Eastern Orthodox website Pravoslavy Works by Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks External links to bibliography. Celestial Hierarchy. 1 September 2006. Mystical Theology Theologica Mystica accessed September 1, 2006 Works Corpus Areopagiticum of Pseudo-Dionysus including the Divine Names, Mystical Theology, Celestial Hierarchy, Ecclesiastical Hierarchy, and Letters available in PDF, HTML, and text formats accessed September 1, 2006 Christian Classics Ethereal Library De Calesti Hierarchy a 14th century Greek manuscript found at Constantinople, page images at Oxford Digital Library from Oxford University's Magdalen College Theologia Vivificans, Cybus Solidus, Dionysi Opera Omnia Reprod, Translatio per Ambrosium Traversarium, Jacobus Faber Stapelensis edited, per Johannem Higmanum et Wolfgangum Hoppelium Parisius, 1498 http colon slash slash gallica dot bnf dot fr slash arc colon slash one two one four eight slash bpt six k five four three one oh three dot r equals dot langan accessed september seventh twenty ten S. Dionysi Areopagite Martyris Incliti, Athenarum Episcopi, et Gallium Apostoli Opera Reprod, Translatio Nova Ambrosi Florentini A. Wecklum Paris, fifteen fifty five
http colon slash slash galica dot bnf dot fr slash arc colon slash one two one four eight slash bpt six k five two four seven two f dot r equals dot lang and accessed September seventh, twenty ten. S. Dionysi Areopagitae Opera Omnia, Georgi Pachymerae Paraphrasi Continenter Illustrata, Opera et Studio Balthasaris Cordery. Petrologia Grisi, Latin Tantum Editi, Tomus II, J. P. Migni, Petit Montrouge, 1856. http arc colon slash one two one four eight slash bpt six k four one one six one five d. r equals. langan accessed September seventh, twenty ten.